Good fun, man. Close, action packed. The clock's ticking too, man. You can feel it with the weather. We had a big cold front bearing down on us, and we only had about three to four hours to like get out there yeah. and get back in before this front hit, and then uh, and those rubble piles came to mind. The cooters just sit right on top of this bridge rubble and wait. They're laying here like packs of wolves, and today they are hungry. Oh, that's me. That's a good one. Get a good bite there. Oh! oh. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. All right, so I'm rigging up a couple of these rods of steel on them. Go out and hit some of these uh, wrecks and rubble piles and maybe catch a cuda or something like that while, while we, uh, we don't have much time with this front coming in, so I know. do something close and fast. I know, it's gonna be uh, a very short day, I think, but it's all about the weather down here, and if the weather's great, you can make a long run, and if it's not, you gotta do something short and close, and, and that, uh, that's what's the best part about this place, man. We got stuff we can do right here. Absolutely. Well, we got some, some bait, and uh, I think we can run out and hit a couple of these uh, uh, rubble piles and, and uh, wrecks that are close within, you know, probably a five, 10 minute rod, and, um, and then go from there. Okay. Yeah, and we, if, uh, we can check a couple spots there, and then there's um, some of those deeper wrecks, like that shrimp boat and stuff. We could hit hit that too. That's real close. It's absolutely beautiful right now. Yeah, I know. I think what's coming is just a a big cold front. You know, it's pushing down. It's gonna blow 30 out of the north and overnight. That's but it is beautiful right now. Prefrontal conditions like this are the best wintertime condition. You know, when you get lucky enough to hit a day like this. I think we nice. have three hours. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, three, three good hours. Three or four hours. You can get a lot done in three hours. We don't run for two of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a big cold front bearing down on us, and we only had about three to four hours to like get out there yeah. and, and get back in before this front hit, and then uh, you know start going over the options of you know what we could do and what's close, what can we get get done, have a lot of action real quick, and and um and those rubble piles came to mind. You know, you always have to have things like that in your arsenal as a fishing guide because that was supposed to be a washout day. And so, you know, if, if we're still guiding and taking people and somebody shows up at the dock and you know, it's calm, they're expecting to go fishing. But as a responsible guide, you gotta look at the weather and you gotta know, okay, is it wise to go and run where I know the fish are, whatever they are, maybe they're 20 miles away. Is that wise to make that kind of run no matter what kind of boat you have with these people that show up? Or is there something that I can do really close? <laughs> Boy, that didn't take long. Fish? Yep. All right. I mean, just almost immediately as soon as it hit the water. And so having close options, you can really make a lot of people happy, including like ourselves, like well, we're sitting here ready to go fishing. We've got everything ready to go. Yeah, we just had to change our game plan, you know, and, and, and that's the beautiful thing about here at Hawks K is there are things that are productive really close. Right. Good fun, man. Yeah, good fun. Close, action pack. The clock's ticking too, man. You can feel it. You can feel it happening with the, with the weather. This is a great option. Staying close to the dock. When we pulled up, you know, the visibility wasn't great because the clouds had already started to move in. It was a little early in the morning. Um, so, you know, you could kind of see the coloration in the water a little bit different. But as we, uh, we approached the spot, you look on the Lowrance there and sure enough, you know, it was a defined mark. You know, you're watching that machine and it's 25 feet and all of a sudden, boom, it comes right up to 15. And so these are, you know, 10 foot um, high piles of rocks. And, um, and you can see the fish just on the machine all marked in there. I think some of the snappers and groupers are down the bottom. And then you're seeing the kudas marking them up, up near the surface suspended. And so once we got ourselves, you know, um, we marked the spots, we knew where we were supposed to be going. We just, uh, instead of dropping the big anchor, we just put the trolling motor down and uh, anchor with the trolling motor right up tied, upwind of these, uh, these rubble piles and got to fishing. I love the kuda. 
you get a bad rap, you know? Well, when you're not fishing for them, but when you are fishing for them, they're yeah. awesome. I threw my first bait out there on a very light rod, six to 12 pound, seven foot St. Croix rod, or 15 pound braid, all bright knot to a piece of wire, haywire twist to, to a hook, very simple rig. But you have to have that wire because the barracuda's teeth are, you know, even super heavy monofilament, they're gonna go right through it. Put that on there, throw it out there, and the first thing that I see is this big boil in the water. As soon as I set the hook with a circle hook, you know, it just takes off running. That's so cool, I love that. There, there you go. go. Good bite. About to take off. A lot of action out here on these kind of places. It's awesome, man. One of the, the ways that we like to fish down here is to get to a place like this to where it's, we, we know there are fish there and start live chumming. Just like a freebie here, a freebie there, you start broadcasting a couple of live baits. Sooner or later, you'll start to see them, you know, whatever's there, we'll start eating those pilchards. What seemed to be there then was a ton of barracudas. I'll tell you what, it didn't take long. We got here in just two seconds and about 15 pilchards. And I, a nice big cuda. cuda. It's a nice cuda. That's it's awesome. a deep swimmer. Yeah. They don't usually stay down like that. This one's tough. You know, you get like a tarpon, you get like a 40 pounder that'll exactly. just beat you up. Oh, this Bite. guy is, he's not particularly big, but he sure is fighting hard. Well, it's fun on this light tackle. Yes, sir. a nice sir. size fish, dude. Yeah, it's all about that's him. That's a good one. It's all about him. Well, that's cool, man. You know, that's the neat thing about the barracudas. You catch them in a lot of different spots, you know? Up on the flats, on the reefs. You kind of feel lucky, like, hey man, at least we got out today because, you know, in another two hours, this big giant green blob is gonna move in and, and that's it, you know? It's either this or, or we're not going today. And that's a great, fun way to spend the day. <laughs> Very cool. Tell you what, while they're biting like that, I'm gonna try throwing this lure out there and see what happens. All right, that's the way to start it out. It is a good way to start it out. See you, buddy. All right. Get a good bite there. Oh! oh! Tell me I still have him. Tell me I still have him. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Waypoint, and by Ameritrail. Daiwa, Marathon, Powerpole, and Vibe. So it'd been a year since we'd hit these these rubble piles together, and uh, you know, gotten some good reports. You know that there was a bunch of barracudas on them. I know there's always some groupers there and snappers and other things like that. It's a, what these rubble, rubble piles are. Is this is a artificial reef. This is um, part of the old Long Key Bridge, where they um, when they took the old bridge and made it into a fishing pier, they literally shaved off about three feet from each side. And this is the old bridge rubble, and they and instead of just taking it to a landfill or just letting it sit right under the bridge and making a mess, they they actually put it on barges and took it about three to four miles offshore, straight out from Long Key Bridge, and dumped them in specific areas. And these are on most charts and stuff like that. These are public numbers, these uh, rubble piles, and they can be very, very productive. No way! I'll tell you what, you can keep the rod vent all day in here. Yeah, man. My kind of fishing. Got a biggin'? I think so. Oh, Keeps. I just got bit right by the boat, too. You hooked up. I hooked up, it was just nonstop action for a while. And you know, we only had about 100, 100 pilchers in the well, and instead of being conservative and you know, trying to make them last all day, we knew it was gonna be, basically we had two hours, man. Let's make it happen. And in two hours between the chumming and throwing out the ones with the, with the hooks on there, it was nonstop action. All right. All right. So this is a really cool spot. When they redid the, uh, the new bridge, they uh, brought all the shavings of the old bridge when they when they consolidated make it made it a walking bridge yeah and dumped the the bridge rubble out here and uh been a fish haven you know they they come in here and it really works good the 
cooters just sit right on top of this bridge rubble and wait and ambush, you know, for the schools of Ballyhoo and whatever swims by. And they're laying here like packs of wolves. And today they are hungry. What happens when you get out there is the current's gonna be going, you know, in a certain direction. And just like a trout in a stream, these barracudas are gonna lay up on or near the surface to where you can kind of get a, get a good look at them. And what's going on is there's some undulation in the bottom and it's creating some kind of cushion there. Because what'll happen there is there'll be like 20 barracudas sitting right next to one another in a line just sitting there waiting for whatever you know barracuda is a very opportunistic feeder but that's the way that they're kind of sitting there they're not just like all over these rubble piles so it's real important to get it to to the right spot and when you do you're going to get attacked i mean it's going to if you got live bait and you throw it out there and you get it in front of this and, and your bait starts washing into one of these lines of barracudas they're all going to start peeling out of there and we got lucky enough to hit that right away uh, but it's cool how you can kind of see them just laying in these lines. All right, that's better. I think I got the hook in that one. And there's the run. Woohoo! Tell you what, whether they're out here or in the shallow water, they fight good, man. Got a little bonefish rod, 10 pound test, keeping the drag real light. All right, I'll see if I can get, get in on the action here. Here we go. You know, if you brought a kid out here, never caught anything like this, it'd be the greatest day of fishing they'd ever seen. Everything you pull in's got teeth and looks cool and eating other fish. Good time, man. Good time. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, we take the cooties for granted because they're everywhere. You know, from the shallowest flats to the deep, deepest wrecks and offshore, you know, there are fish that's just everywhere in the ocean. And that one just went in on his own. That's me. That's a good one. Get a good bite there. Oh! oh! Tell me I still have him. Tell me I still have him. That was a nice I think jump. He came oh, off. he came off. I bet I can hook him again. That was a big I one, bet man. I can hook him again. Yeah, that was a stud. All right, I'm that in there now. That was a stud. Uh, oh, there's a big, big explosion. That's a little one. That was the stud of the whole day right there. Came off. Bet I can hook him again though, I bet he's right in there. The barracudas usually when you hook them, they're gonna either come up and jump or, or fight near the surface. Rarely will a barracuda ever get you down in the rock, rock pile. That's a very, very rare occurrence. But the other fish, the groupers and the snappers, which there are definitely groupers and mutton snappers and other, other fish there, if they come up and eat that, that bait, the first thing they do is run to that rubble pile and try to break you off. And uh, after catching a few barracudas, make another cast in there. I hooked up a nice fish and it went straight down and he got me in that rubble pile. And so instead of you know trying to pull too hard, I kind of loosened it up, gave him a little slack. We moved the boat back to a different position and I, and I uh, then closed it, started reeling, you know, just, just working him out slowly. And finally, I felt him come free and got him up there, nice grouper. Oh, it's a nice fish. What is it? Grouper! Yeah, that's what it was. A gag too. He's living on that rubble pile. Look at that. Man, I almost gave up on it. Good I dropped the anchor back a couple times so that he, he'd uh, get a different angle on him, but look at that. Didn't you catch a bunch of gags down in oh, yeah. Key West? Yeah. I don't catch them as often up here. That's you catch them on fly. Mm -hmm. Catch them all kinds of ways. That's a nice gag. Ah, bird got my bait. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's definitely a gag, right? Yeah. Yep. They look similar to the black, but we catch more blacks here. That's kind of like the, your inshore grouper. You find a, I used to find these little spots. They'd be like, you know, five or six feet deep, and they'd be loaded with fish like that. Yeah. It's just, just shallow. But well, that's now they, the second one we've had that's done that, and it's right on top of these rubble piles. 
and it, and uh, you know it's basically when the kudus didn't get it it got down a little deeper and the grouper were coming up and getting it he'd be close to being a keeper but it's out of season so we'll, he's lucky his lucky day So no matter where you're fishing, weather is crucial to your safety and your success. And sometimes of the year, you have bad weather coming and you can actually forecast it and you can see it, but you know that it's not gonna come through until later in the day. In the Florida Keys here in the winter time, this happens quite regularly with cold fronts moving from the north to the south and pushing right through the Florida Keys. So we can see this and forecast about what time it's gonna come through. So if a front is gonna come through at one o'clock, well, it's still a very good fishing day up until then. And then it's gonna go from maybe blowing 10 miles an hour to maybe blowing 30. And obviously sea conditions can get very different at that point. So a lot of the things that we like to do to make sure that we're prepared for these weather changes is, is simple things like maintaining your engine and getting regular maintenance on your outboard. This is your lifeline. This is the one that takes you back to the dock. So you wanna have great confidence in your battery and in your engine that when you turn that key, it's gonna start. Secondly, you wanna let someone know where you're going so that if anything does happen, they know that's where they should go look first. Third, you wanna be constantly watching the weather. Even though the front is forecasted to come through at one o'clock, a lot of times they can come through earlier than that or stall and be there later. We can do this with getting weather now on our GPS system so we have it on the boat. You can also listen to the NOAA weather radio and before you go out, you can get information from all of the different sources and kind of put together your own forecast for that day for your exact area. And all of this information now is available to you either on your phone if you're in range or if you have the serious weather service on your GPS, you can get that while you're on the boat. Service your engine, let somebody know where you're going and be aware of what that weather is doing and then be ready to leave before it gets to you. So that's how to stay safe on the water when you have forecastable weather moving your way like we do in the Florida Keys here in the wintertime. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. And by Motor Guide. Nikon. Wiley X. Lithium Pros. And Bernouin Rod Holders. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Got him on. Oh, that's a good one there. I'm getting ready to get bit right here. And there he is. Boy, He's they're, on. They're quite cooperative today. Tell you what, they are. You know, right before this front can't oh, come in. Pulled it out. I've definitely come to this spot. Pulled it out. And struggled to get a bite, even with a live bait. And then he got it back. There it is. Don't think that's a kudo. That's what you said three times. Oh, that was a good fish, man. I had my wire all kinked up. I should have. Should have changed my wire. Got lazy oh, and missed, got. A, missed a good one. That's a good one. You know, out of Hawks K here, one of the things that we get the most requests for guiding and one of the things that you see the greatest appreciation is barracudas. Um, when, uh, you know, a lot of people, when we're taking them out for the first time, you know, we could spend all day trying to catch a sailfish or a tarpon or something like that. And maybe we catch them, maybe we don't. But to be able to go out there in two hours and catch five, 10 uh, nice barracudas with the teeth and the jumping and the action, I mean, that's what people really enjoy so much more than just, you know, often just trying to catch that one uh, fish that has a different name to it. Well, the barracuda is the most mounted fish. 
That's that there are more mounts of the barracuda than any other fish. Probably the next fish will be a sailfish and maybe a tarpon after that. But uh, you know, talking to the people that are in that business, that's that's the best one because it's a it's a cool fish to have on the on the wall. You know, you can get a reproduction reproduction mount of one of these. You don't have to kill them anymore. And uh, they got big teeth and you know, you got that on a wall in middle America somewhere. I mean people are like, wow, you caught that thing? Look at the big teeth and all that. I mean it's the ultimate predator. They got a lot of cool features, like every one of them's got this little hole right here, and then they got this bottom too, and that fits perfectly and makes a lock right there. So when they lock down on something, it's not getting away. It's a great fish to have, and, and certainly to be able to just go right out front here, and we could have caught as many as we wanted to, you know? At some point we had to decide, you know what? I th I think it was time to, to head in. It was kind of decided for us because we ran out of bait. So, you know, we had a great day. We could see this, you know, I'm looking at, at the radar and I could see this storm coming. It is so close to us and it's like, you know what, if we leave now, we're gonna be back at the dock. We can probably wash the boat, get in the car before any of this rain comes. And that's almost exactly how it happened. I mean, man, once that storm came in, <laughs> that was that was serious rain for the rest of the day. But that's fun. I like to have a I like to have a bent rod. There's plenty of rod bent in there. And I like the fact that those groupers are there. That's a, an interesting one. And I know there's mutton snappers there too. I've seen them when I was diving. You know, set it up right. Probably catch one of those too. That's All right. Are you gonna run? Here we go. That's a good one. Woo Get a good bite there. Oh! oh. Uh, tell me I still have him. Tell me I still have him. 